Hi. I'm uh, just in the process of uh, assembling a, a board that I'm going to be using for uh, another project. And um, I realized that um, I've never really done anything on the uh, soldering station, on actual sol using the soldering station. You may have seen me use uh, this before. Ooh. It's really hot. Ooh. It's crazy. Um, and you can see this is my, uh, well, actually you can't see it, but anyway, over that way right there, you can see a little bit of, right here is um, the uh, soldering station that I have uh, put together, a do-it-yourself soldering station. <coughs> and um, this one's based on uh, a design from Metcal. And essentially it uses uh, RF technology, technology RF, to uh, transmit or uh, move power from the uh, base station, the, uh, the actual soldering station, to the actual handpiece and the, specifically to the tip. Um, now I don't remember the exact uh, way it works, but it's something along the lines of um, the tip itself has uh, a certain is made of a slightly different metal than the rest of the uh, iron and the rest of the rest of the, the actual tip. And unfortunately, I don't actually have a tip but you can actually pull this out um, and you can see it's basically just uh, it's basically it's basically just coax right here it's going right through to a connector inside here and then from there it goes to a connector and, and the part of the iron here and essentially at the tip what ends up happening is the RF energy is uh, absorbed into a uh, a load basically like a you know like a dummy load or something like that Except this one's a little bit different. This one, um, the impedance of this load changes um, with temperature. Now the interesting thing about that is it's self-regulating. So essentially, <coughs> uh, the tip will get to a certain temperature. Uh, so, you know, let's say you power it up and um, the tip is cold. So it's, uh, you know, 20 degrees, 20, 21 degrees, whatever, Celsius ambient temperature. At that temperature, up until uh, some preset temperature, and these, the temperatures vary by tip, so it is really tip dependent. Um, the RF <clears throat> energy that is transmitted to this handpiece will be uh, absorbed, or, you know, uh, the, the impedance matches is, is perfect, so essentially all the energy will be, you know, absorbed into the tip, which will be converted to heat, as anybody who's done any RF stuff knows. Um, and of course the tip will heat up, and as it heats up it's going to change its impedance characteristics, and what's going to end up happening is, is it gets to the, just about the temperature it needs to, so let's say for example this is a 650 degree Fahrenheit tip, um, sorry I don't remember what that is in Celsius off the top of my head, I just remember that's the actual value for this. What's going to happen is the uh, impedance match is going to change such that the RF energy is not being absorbed by the tip, uh, the load at the tip, and the special metal, but indeed instead is being reflected. <clears throat> so you know, um, a simple example of this is when you know people talk about an impedance mismatch on a transmission line, for example, where you know you, the, the standard example is you've got uh, an oscilloscope, which has, say, for example, a 50 ohm imp input impedance, and um, if you don't have that match, what you're going to end up seeing is you're going to end up seeing um, energy from that signal that's, if, say, going into your oscilloscope, bouncing back towards your source, and you can actually see that on the oscilloscope. You can start seeing, uh, you know, standing waves and whatnot, and uh, this is all measurable and whatnot. And indeed, this is exactly what's happening with this handpiece when it gets up to temperature. Now, the interesting thing about that is that means that the tip. Uh, will self-regulate its own temperature. So as it gets to the point where it's getting hot enough, it's going to stop absorbing energy and bounce it back to the source. And as it cools down, it will start absorbing more RF energy, which will then start heating it up again. So it's really interesting because you're actually delivering the power exactly where you need it, uh, which is the tip of the iron. And as the tip changes temperature, um, it will absorb or reflect, or absorb or not absorb, uh, energy from the RF base station, or from the RF uh, uh, 
soldering station. Of course, if you've done anything with radio, you kind of well, say, well, wait a second, all this RF energy that's getting bounced back once you've got the, the uh, tip up to temperature, what's that going to do to the uh, RF generator? Because that's really a bad thing. That means the source is getting, is absorbing energy or is getting energy reflected back at it. Indeed, um, that's, I think, part of the actual design is to deal with that particular problem, but also um, to detect that, which you can do that with a uh, VSWR. Um, you get a standing wave, no, voltage, yes, voltage standing wave, something or another, I don't remember. Uh, but essentially what it's doing is it's measuring the amount of energy that's coming back. Um, and it does this in a way such that you can measure just the energy that's coming back as well. But in the, in the actual soldering station itself, um, it can measure both. It can measure uh, forward RF energy and reverse RF energy. So you can measure the amount going to the tip as well as the amount, uh, amount that's coming back or being reflected. So you can do some you know, interesting control stuff with this, but you know, primarily what you can do is you can you know, turn down the output power once you hit to a certain point. Say for example, if you just had the iron sitting there not doing anything, well, you might say, well, look, if we're reflecting a huge amount of energy back, we'll just shut down the output completely or you know, turn it down to a very low amount. So, um, you know, and, or, or when you detect that the uh, there's a there's a perfect match, i.e., you've got zero returning or zero returning energy. Well, then you'll crank the power up until you start seeing a little bit, and then back off a little bit. You know, just you know algorithms like that that allow you to uh, um, control the amount of energy. But in this particular design, and again, not by me. This is by a, a fellow on the EEV blog forum, which goes who goes by the name of uh, Mamalala. He uh, designed a do-it-yourself Metcal replacement, or uh, not Metcal replacement, but a Metcal uh, soldering-based uh, soldering station. He uses the original Metcal uh, hand pieces. I think it's the RM3, I think it is, or 5 or 6. I think it's the 3, RM3. And um, his current incarnation can deliver, I think, a maximum of 40 watts of power um, to the tip. Which is, you know, perhaps not very impressive for some people who go, oh, well, you know, it's not that much energy or power. I mean, I've used to, let's say, 60 watt or whatever. But it's actually quite a bit if you consider that it's just the tip. There's not, there's, not, there's no energy that's being dissipated, not dissipated, well, dissipated, being absorbed by any part of this tip. I mean, yes, there's heat energy that's being absorbed by the, the tip and then, f you know, uh, conducting backwards. But, um, there, you know, it's not—it's not like you're heating the entire tip, the entire element, or the, like a, like a regular heat goes. So, for example, if I were to ugh, show you this, how's that doing? Oh, that's pretty good. Um, if I were to show you this soldering iron here, um, really quick, let's do quick impromptu teardown. And I probably should unplug this before doing this, but eh, whatever. Okay, so the way these work, it's really straightforward. There's a heating element here. So um, obviously it powers it. There's a heating element here which will heat up. If the tip goes, yeah, maybe like that. Yeah, yeah, there we go. That's easy. Okay. So the tip goes on the heating element like this. So the entire heating element is being, uh, um, or as I should say, heating heat element is heating the entire tip here. So this whole tip. So if you think about this for a moment, when you solder, you are only you see this part right up here, the tip, 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 tip. But you're, but you're wasting, your heating element is wasting all that energy heating up the entire thing. Now, granted, of course, it's going to get up to a temperature and all this great, wonderful thing, and it monitors the temperature and regulates it. But the end result is still the same: is that you're wasting a huge amount of energy. So that 40 watt iron, like this, I don't know how this 40 watts is a hand piece. This is 65, uh, six, uh, 65 watts. So the 65 watt hand piece. Um, which, mind you, can get up to you know 850 degrees Fahrenheit or something like that. Um, you know, it's, it's not a small amount. This is a fair amount of uh, of uh, power that this thing can you know put out. But at the end of the day, um, this soldering hand piece will put out put out. It will heat up because that's really all you really care about at the end of the day. You don't really care about how much energy this, the, you know, the, your iron uh, 
can um, uh, could deliver to a you know a part or a, a joint. You don't care about the amount of heat. You know, can it go up to like you know 900 degrees Fahrenheit? No. What you really care about is can it melt the damn solder at the darn joint you're at, and you need. Um, uh, thermal capacity to do that typically, right? You need thermal mass to do that. So the ability to, to take energy and convert it into a heat or to, you know, in the end it's always taking the energy and pushing it into a particular point, but it ends up being heat uh, that will melt the, melt the solder and, you know, do your, your uh, do the business. This, I would argue, is probably more efficient at doing that. So at lower powers it can melt, it can heat up a much, much, much larger uh, area or thermal mass than my hate my my Heiko can almost guaranteed um, I don't know where well actually <laughs> so uh, we can take a look at this which um, these are all fake pennies of course right mm-hmm exactly but essentially you can take a look at this and and I use this tip I use this little tip here you know this is just this little this little crooked I don't know if you can see that but anyway you, can, you just that little itty bitty crook tip right there you're not going to focus on it, are you? It's not, it's not big. Um, need something to compare it against, right? Well, penny. There you go. Canadian penny. I mean, it's really not that big, right? It's a fairly small tip, but this was able to solder this no problem. Um, took a little bit of time, because uh, I also didn't have it cranked up all the way, but, you know, no problems whatsoever. And that would be very difficult for my uh, Heiko to do. Maybe a, a different model of Heiko, maybe with a different tip. I have a chisel tip on there, which is bigger than this guy, uh, sorry, bigger, bigger than this one, and still, no problem doing that. So that's the kind of thing, and I've soldered a penny to a sheet of copper cloth without any issues, you know, right around the edge of it. So, you know, no problems whatsoever. So this is a, you know, I, I think this iron is much more efficient at delivering energy to the joint to be soldered, and um, that's that. So uh, I really like uh, I, I I really like that whole soldering technology. Um, one of my projects is to um, shut this off here. And actually, hang on a second. I'm gonna go take a little. I'm gonna go take a little trip. Ah, there we go. <coughs> so <coughs> we'll go bring this out. There we go. So you can see there's the soldering iron. There's my really cheap fume blower, not extractor. I probably should do something more important or you know better than that. But quite frankly, <coughs> I probably don't do enough soldering to make it worthwhile. Um, here's the uh, controller board down there, and here's the case that I'm gonna be using, which is actually a. Uh, uh, an old uh, radiation measurement uh, instrument. It came from an old radiation measurement instrument from uh, Invenosense or something like that, and then it was bought by Fluke or something. Anyway, <clears throat> so um, I've retrofitted it. I'm going to use the heatsink that's in the back here to heat it, which has uh, gotten a little bit warm, but uh, doing fine. <clears throat> and um, there's a transformer that's going to go in here, and then there's a front panel that goes right here. And I have to still have to do a custom board, controller board for that to control the, the front panel. Um, and then that'll be my soldering station, hopefully, uh, without any, without too many uh, craziness. So you can see, get a little bit of an idea. And there's a, a pot that sets the actual uh, set uh, set output power when it's not doing anything. So the, the set point. Uh, so with that, you can go ahead and increase the um, the uh, the at rest set point, if you will. So clearly, uh, it, it it'll attempt to keep uh, that much energy, uh, that much power. Uh, going toward to the iron uh, when it's not you know being actively drained by some other source when you you know you try and solder and you know it'll then apply more power when needed. Um, but as you can see, the power supply that I'm using right now is a HP uh, triple output for the uh, control voltages and uh, a uh, Agilent 3632 for the uh, actual uh, power and beef mine. It's running 30 volts at. Uh, Four amps max, which but I don't think it ever goes much above much above 1.82 amps. It's about the maximum I've seen. And uh, there you go. So that's the uh, soldering uh, station thing that I'm gonna you know, be working on eventually. And um, 
I like it. It's fantastic, even as it is right now. Like, there's no control board on it because, that, like I said, there's a sort of an analog feedback. Well, sort of, there's an analog feedback loop in there that controls the uh, the output power based on the return power and whatnot. So, um, <clears throat> it works basically with just the board right like that. So I could just in theory package that up, throw a uh, transformer in there with a rectifier and get some uh, power supply stuff dumped in there and be off to the races. But for the moment, I'm gonna let it. Uh, I'm gonna just use it like this and. Uh, work on a proper controller board for it. So that's that. Uh, hope you found that interesting. Uh, I thought I might as well do talk a bit about that because I had not, uh, I don't think today, and uh, while well, I was getting this done. And uh, hopefully you'll see this in a, uh, another video and uh, maybe if uh, you see the title there, you might have a, a bit of a hint of what that's, what's coming up on there. So take care, have a good one, catch you later. Cheers.